What is up guys? In the last video we talked about how we could use linear regression to predict a future value and in this video we're going to be talking about multiple regression which uses multiple values to still predict a future value. What we're going to be doing in this example is taking the fuel consumption of a car and how much percent electric it is to calculate a distance that it can travel. So let's get started immediately by importing pandas as pd importing numpy as mp. Then from sklearn, we want to import the linear model and we're going to import linear regression. Then from sklearn metrics, we want to import the R squared score and the mean absolute error. Then from sklearn dot model selection, we are going to import train test split. Now the function is going to be called predict distance which is going to take two inputs. One is going to be the fuel consumption the car takes in liters. And we want to also mention how much percent electric this car is. Then we can go ahead and get started with creating the raw data, which is going to equal a map. And inside, first we're going to mention the fuel consumption in liters. So this is just going to be how many liters the car consumed to get to the certain distance. So the first car consumed one liter, second car two, two liters again, then three liters, four liters, five liters, and six liters. Then we want to mention how much percent electric each car was, so percent electric. And the first car was 20% electric, so was the second one. Third car was 60% electric. The fourth car was 90% electric, another 90%. We're gonna add 50, and finally, another 90%. And finally, we want to provide some sample data on how far these cars actually traveled. And the first car, traveled 200 kilometers, the second one 240, third one 560, the fourth was 990, then we got 1200 for the fifth, 800 for the sixth, and finally 1400 for the final one, because it was mostly electric and it consumed a lot of fuel. Then we're going to go ahead and change this into a data frame, so we're going to type in pd data frame, and we will insert our raw data. And as always, let's go ahead and create our uppercase X, which is going to be the input parameters. And that's going to be a NumPy array with a data frame inserted and a two dimensional list, which is going to take the fuel consumption as the first parameter and the percent electric as the second. And we do not need to reshape this one because it's already in the form that we need to use it in. And then the output variable, which is Y, is also going to equal a numpy.array with a data frame of the total distance in kilometers. And this one we need to reshape to minus one, one. Now let's go ahead and print X and print Y just to make sure everything's working correctly. And of course, as I always forget, we need to call the function. So here we'll go ahead and predict distance. We're going to say the car consumes three liters and 0.70% electric. Now we can go ahead and rerun the program. And all of our values will be displayed in the console, which means we have retrieved them correctly from the data frame. Let's just get rid of that now. Next, let's go ahead and split this data into test and training data. So we're gonna do train x, test x, train y, test y, train test split. And inside here, we have to insert our x and our y that we want to split up. And I also want to show you actually what the random state does, because in the last video, I don't think I made it that clear, but uh, just type in random state zero, and then we're gonna go to test size, and we're gonna leave that at 0.20 which I also believe is the default, but uh, I'm just putting it in there because maybe you want to change that later. But let's go ahead and print all of these test values. So as you can see right now, if we print all of the test values, it's going to be split up into two different sets. This is the test data, and this is the data we're actually gonna to use to train the model. But what you're going to notice is every time we rerun this program, we're going to end up with the same exact values. And that is only because we set the random state to zero, which means it will always generate the same random values, which is what you usually want, because most of the time you don't want your test data to ever mix up with your training data, because that might ruin your model. But now let's go ahead and change change the random state to three, for example, you're going to notice that we are going to get some different random values. And if we remove this random state altogether, it's going to generate random values each time we run the program. So it's always going to have some new values. But for this purpose, we are just going to leave the random state to zero because we always want to have the same values for this testing purpose, which is going to be 1400 and 560. 
followed by these ones as well. But anyway, I hope you understand a bit more about how the random state works, but now we're going to go ahead and move on with the project again. And the next thing we have to do is go ahead and initialize the model. So the model is going to equal a linear regression model as last time, and we want to fit the model with our train data. So train x and train y. Next, we're going to go ahead and make a prediction. So to do that, we're going to type in y prediction, and that's going to equal the model dot predict. And inside here, we have to add a two dimensional array with the fuel consumption in liters and the percent electric that the car is. Then we can go ahead and print the prediction, which is just going to be the y prediction. And of course, let's not forget to include our mean absolute error and our r squared score. So let's go ahead and print MAE followed by mean absolute error. And inside here, we should insert our testing data. So for example, test Y and the Y test prediction, which I actually forgot to create. So let's go here and type in Y test prediction. And that's just going to equal the model dot predict all of the X values from the test set. Then we can go Y test prediction and see how fitting it is. And we're going to do the same thing for the R squared. So print R2. It's going to take the R2 score with the test Y and the Y test prediction. Anyway, now we can go ahead and run the program. So far, I've inserted a car that has consumed three liters and is 70% electric. So let's go ahead and click on run. And you're going to notice that we're going to have an error rate of about 99 for this one, but it's going to, but it's going to estimate that the car will make it 847 kilometers. And the model is about 94% accurate according to our R2 score. And if we go up here and actually try to compare what we put to what we would get, you're going to notice that three with a 0.90% electric rating will give us 990 kilometers. So 0 0.70 and three for 847 sounds about right. But now let's pretend that our car wants to consume five liters of fuel and is 80% electric. Then we're going to get a prediction of 1,118 based on the values we've inserted and based on the data it learned from. But I also want to show you what happens if we remove the random state because depending on the random state, your model accuracy might increase or might decrease. There's going to be a lot of variation because this project is so small and did not have enough data to learn from, which means we're not gonna get many accurate values. But if we just run and save, you're going to notice sometimes the percent of the chance is going to drop based on the test values. Sometimes it's going to be so low that you can't even do much with the data because it is not fitting. And sometimes you're going to get a score that's really high. So the random state can affect your results a lot. And in theory, this shouldn't be a problem if you have enough samples. In this example, if this one picks the wrong samples, we're going to have a very low rating regardless if the model is good or not. So it's always important to have a proper sample size when working with these predictions because this certainly is not enough to make any proper predictions, but is definitely enough to show you how it's done in case you have a larger data set. But with that being said, I hope you got an idea on how to use multiple regression and how you can use as many values as you want to calculate a single value, such as if you wanted to add more, you just add some more inside here, and that would give you a better opportunity to calculate a prediction based on different parameters. But as always guys, with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.